Okay, good morning Year 9. Uh, you've already had a little look at the Tempest in some lessons last week. You've had a think about how the plot works and you've also looked about putting that plot in order and summarising as well as, lots of lo as well as lots of other lovely activities too. So today we're going to talk about the uh, island as a setting in the Tempest. Um, so get yourself prepared. We're going to do a couple of little activities and then I'm going to set you off uh, to do some thinking of your own. Okay, just to get us warmed up then, let's have a look at our first little starter. Let's have a game of Would You Rather. So I'm going to give you a couple of options to choose from, uh, and I want you to have a little think about which of these you would prefer. Number one, would you rather live on an island forever with your best friend, with no means of escape, or be stuck on an island for the year with your least favourite relative? Ooh, uh, who would that be? Okay, next one. Would you rather be shipwrecked with everyone you love, only food you hate? Or be shipwrecked with everyone you hate, but only food you love? And finally, would you rather be stuck on an island with a beautiful weather and vicious creepy crawlies and creatures and sharks? Or would you rather be stuck on an island where it rained constantly, but there were no creatures at all? Have a little think, one minute. Okay, let's move on then. So we've already thought a little bit about what um, islands might convey, haven't we? We've already seen what an island setting is all about and we've explored that in terms of lots of different literature. Um, let's then think about islands in the Tempest. Okay, I'm going to give you one minute. You can pause this film for one minute. How many of these things can you think of that an island might represent? Okay, what did you get? Maybe you got these ideas. Perhaps an island is a prison. Uh, it's a place we can't get off and therefore it's a place of isolation. Or maybe an island is a place of escape that we want to get to. It's therefore a place of safety. It's a place of retreat. But perhaps it's also something to defend as well, that we don't want anything bad to happen. We want to protect it and keep it as our own. So islands are quite important in literature and also in the way that people think about themselves. Many nations are islands. We live on an island nation. Just, I want you to think about these two questions, and you can pause this film to think about this. How do you think this affects the way inhabitants think about themselves? But also, what is different about an island nation's men mindset, their mentality, from the mindset of someone who lives in a country surrounded by many others? How does that change the way you think about yourself? Okay, so I just mentioned a term there, didn't I? Island mentality. Well, you often hear about this term, people often talk about it. And basically it refers to the notion of isolated communities perceiving themselves sometimes as exceptional or superior to the rest of the world. And you've also seen a, or read an extract from Shakespeare, a really famous extract from Shakespeare. Uh, you read this a couple of weeks ago or a couple of lessons ago. Uh, and this is from Richard II, and it's a well-known speech, it's known as the Sceptered Isle speech. And you've already started to explore these ideas about how the person speaking this speech is perceiving what it's like to live on an island. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask you to pause and see how much of that little speech you can memorise in about seven or eight minutes. How did you get on? I hope uh, you managed to memorise at least some of it. It's a really important skill. Memorising poetry and works of literature can enable us to understand them better, but also it gives us great practice for when we get towards GCSE and we need to start memorising our quotes. OK, moving on then. So we've just thought about an island mentality. Let's see that from a different perspective. Um, other people choose to reject the island, the idea of island mentality, in favour of a more sense, a sense more of a of human um, community of lots of people coming together. As long ago as 1624, that's the year after Shakespeare published his famous complete works, or people published it for him because he was dead by then. Um, people were thinking about and questioning this idea of being an isolated entity. Just read this extract from the works of John Donne and think about what he's trying to say. I'm going to give you five minutes to read this, and then I want you to uh, then think about the question on the bottom of the page, which is, how can you link these ideas to what you already know about The Tempest? It's an interesting piece of writing, isn't it? Um, John Donne appears to be saying that humanity is a thing which should all be um, cherished as one big entity, and if one person dies or one person's ill, then it affects all of us. Really interesting perspective. Okay, let's move on then. Here's another question I want you to have a little think about. Two minutes. 
how do you think the majority of the characters in The Tempest feel about being on this island? Do they want to be there? Okay, so we've thought about quite a lot of ideas about how the island might fit into the Tempest, lots of different ways of looking at islands. Here's another way. Do you recognise any of these places? Three different famous islands. Okay, I'll tell you what they are. The first one is known as Devil's Island, and it was a prison, also referred to as the Prisoners as Hell on Earth. Not a nice place to be, as you can see from that bottom image down there. The second image is Alcatraz. Famous San Franciscan prison, well known, of course, as being the place where the famous gangster Al Capone was imprisoned. You couldn't swim away from them, you couldn't escape. There are shark infested waters all around it. And of course, finally, we've got Robin Island in South Africa. You may have got that one because you can see Table Mountain in, uh, in Cape Town in the back there. And this, of course, where, was where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned during the um, terrible period of apartheid in South Africa. So we're starting to see lots of different ways of viewing what an island is, viewing what an island can be, or viewing what an island has been. So let's summarise then. Islands can be beautiful retreats. They can be somewhere we cherish and seek to protect. But they can also be prisons. Islands can be dangerous or inhospitable. OK, so your um, next task is to read these key quotes about islands from the Tempest. Uh, and you will see in these quotes that the island is being represented and seen in lots of different ways. Take five minutes to read through those, please. OK, now you've read them, uh, I want you to start thinking about the different ways in which those islands are represented, or rather, different way in which the island is represented. And I want you to categorise them, please. So I want you to um, categorise uh, one group of them as showing the island as a prison. You can do this in any way you want. You can circle them, you can just annotate them, you can colour kind of coordinate them. I then want you to find the group which shows the island as a positive place. And finally, I want you to find the group and categorise it, which shows the island as a dangerous or inhospitable place. Take seven minutes to do that, please. OK, so your final uh, big task, it was one final task after this, but your final big task is to look at the following questions here. Uh, and I just want you to answer one of these, please. But I want you to use one of the quotes that you've just looked at when you've been thinking about islands in the Tempest. So use a quote and think about what we've discussed today. Choose one question below to answer, please. So it could be, to what extent is the island in the Tempest a prison? It could be, to what extent is the island in the Tempest a place of beauty and wonder? Or finally, to what extent is the island in the Tempest inhospitable? You can write a P paragraph here, so you've got your point, your evidence, and your um, your um, analysis, and you can start to go into a little bit of detail about what exactly is happening in the language there. Take about 12 minutes to do that, please. Okay, good work, everybody. You're doing absolutely fantastically. Okay, let's have a look at one final quote here. This is from Act 2, uh, Scene 2. Trinculo says this. He says, He has neither bush nor scrub to bear off any weather at all, and another storm brewing, I hear it, seeing in the wind, yon same black cloud, yon huge one. What's the technique that's been used in here? Particularly thinking of that line, another storm brewing. OK, of course, we're looking here at pathetic fallacy, aren't we? We've discussed this, of course, before in terms of the birds. You will have seen it in uh, examples of po poetry and other extracts we've used in class as well. But it's, of course, it's where the writer uses weather to convey the mood of the story or the text. Now, and there might literally be another storm coming, because, of course, this is all about storms this play. It's the tempest, isn't it? There may literally be one coming, but also there's a sense here that there perhaps might be something else being represented by the storm. Just take two minutes to think about what that might be. OK, thank you very much, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed looking at the way that islands are represented in the Tempest, and I'm sure you've been working really, really hard. Thank you very much.